Welcome to Dear Future Wifey Presents Off the Podcast. Man, I'm so excited to have this episode in this season. Man, let me tell you something. I got my girl on the podcast today and her girl game. And we about to get really, really serious. Now, you know, um, she was on one of our previous episodes, her and her husband. And she talked about this amazing book called How to Get Rid of a Man. Bestseller. Yeah, bestseller. New York Times bestseller. We're going to speak that into existence. And, um, I, you know, me being nosy, I said I got to have her on the podcast so we can talk about what she did <laughs> to get rid of a man. <laughs> you wanted your ratings up. Yeah, I wanted my ratings up to, to have to have T-shirt, you know. So I, I want y'all to know that uh, it's about to get really interesting. So without further ado, welcome to <laughs> Off the Podcast. Tisha Owens. <laughs> Gracias. Oh, Lord, you are not Hispanic. So <laughs> what do you know? Oh, Lord. Um, first of all, I'm just so grateful to be here. And, you know, I know his name is Laterris, but I will be referencing him as Laterius. So, um... <laughs> I just want to say thank you for having us here today. I'm excited to be exposing the book. Of course, when we talked about it on the podcast, we had quite a few people to write yes, in yes. and ask, where's the book? We've been waiting for the book. So I wanted to come on and share with some people who know really well about what was happening behind the scenes. So I want you to, uh, why did you choose this group of women? Well, Priscilla, when I was married at the time, um, she and her husband were our go-to couple. So whenever we would go out together, we would call them. And we spent a lot of time together. So uh, Priscilla knew a lot about what was happening during the process. And so I just knew that she would be aware of what was going on during our marriage. So uh, a lot of the book is about that. So I wanted to make sure she was here. And then my daughter, of oh, course. And Priscilla also did the forward. Oh, yeah, Priscilla did the yeah, forward. Yeah. We can't leave that out. No, you can't leave that out. <laughs> Priscilla shot to do a forward. OK, okay. She's doing something. <laughs> <laughs> I know y'all like that. Hey, you know your big deal. Anyway, uh, yes, she is. And so uh, Elizabeth, my daughter, I wanted to make sure she was a part of this. And so um, she knows now all about it. She didn't know about it in the beginning. She knew some of it, but she has now learned the whole story. So I definitely wanted her to be a part just for her to uh, let the audience hear her version. And, and now And then of course, Tammy Franklin, yes. Uh, she was one that assist. Well, uh, I'm going to say she assisted me in the process of getting to know him. Mm. And so uh, she was there through the whole process of the dating and the process of figuring this whole thing out. So she was very aware of all the behind the scenes that was happening as well. And then Yulia, which is Julia, <laughs> comes along Julia. and she wants to know the tea on everything. So, of course, <laughs> uh, I've been giving her all this information over the years. So she and after she read the book, she was she had learned so many things. So we had so many discussions mm -hmm. about the book over and over and over again. So she was like, I have to be a part of this because I want to know more about it as well as share my my version of what I've experienced with the book. So that's why they're here. So. Tisha, why now? It took you 19 years to write this book. Ooh. Why did it take so long? I believe it took so long because the, the Lord was still breaking me even after I wrote the book. And there was a process of learning that was still happening after I wrote the book. I had to learn uh, more of what he was doing with me and having me write the book. And when I think about processes of even individuals in the Bible, the Lord would give them direction, but sometimes those things wouldn't be carried out for years. Some of it had to do with disobedience. Some of it had to do with the process of him building them to get to that place where they could really be obedient and do right. what he told them to do. So for me, it has just been a journey of learning more about myself, humbling myself, and then understanding how to write the book in the first place. Right. So that played a major role. When you write something as transparent and vulnerable as this, I mean, no one will ever understand the, the breaking and the tears that were shed mm -hmm. and the going back down memory lane and saying, oh, my God, I don't want people to know this about me. Uh, mm. Talk about what that was like. <clears throat> it was just that. It was, <laughs> it was hard to sometimes relive those memories and then say, I remember the Lord clearly saying to me, 
you've done these things and now you're going to tell everybody what you mm. did. And I said, I remember saying, mm -mm -mm. <laughs> <laughs> no, like, like seriously saying, and, and I was good for telling the Lord no, but he reminded me <laughs> of the consequences of that. Yes. I remember the beating that I got from the Lord. I mean, I literally felt beaten in the sense of disciplined and there were just some things that I would try to do. And the Lord would say to me over and over again, no, no, mm -hmm. no. Because he was saying to me, you're not ready. You haven't done what I said. You haven't accomplished what I told you to do. So he sat me down for years. There were mm -hmm. things that I had dreams of doing that he just said no every single time. And, or he would make sure that door was closed where I couldn't do it. Mm -hmm. And that was very hard. As I, as I was reading this book, I read this book solely for the preparation of interviewing you and I found God interviewing me. Mm. <laughs> wow. You, Powerful. I called you. <laughs> if I curse you, you got cussed out. Because <laughs> I said, I can't believe, God, what are you doing? Why are you exposing me? I mm. have nothing to do with this woman. <laughs> Nothing to do with that. It messed me up. Oh, so wow. I, was sitting, I, uh, I started reading it yesterday and I was sitting on the toilet. I know it's TMI. That's when you get your best reading in. That's when you get your best reading in. Somebody say, I was reading the book. My foot was getting numb. You know how it is. You're just sitting on there. And it got so good. Cause I said, like, I'm going to read a few pages and I'm going to get up. And I was like, oh my God. I was on, and by that time, I was on page 50. And I kept reading. I was like, Tisha was crazy. <laughs> Let me tell you something. What was so interesting about the whole ordeal is that your father and you plotted together. Like y'all was some Bonnie and Clyde or something. As yes. y'all was plotting it. So was the original goal him getting you married or he was just saying, I want to win and make sure nobody breaks my daughter's heart? I don't think he ever intended for it to be a, a get to the wedding. I think it started out as he was coaching me. He was giving me direction on the different things I was calling him about. But as he began to get more and more caught up <laughs> in the relationship, you know, my father was the king of game playing. Yeah. So because he was that, he could see his game, Mr. S's game. And so he just kept coaching me to the point of getting married. So when you started off with Mr. S, was there genuine love and attraction from the very beginning or was it a game at the beginning? I'm going to say from the very she beginning. She thought he was cute. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, Tammy can speak cute. to that. Yeah, yeah she, oh, she was attractive. So Tammy, when y'all when y'all ran into Mr. S, uh -huh. what was what what was that, that girl talk behind the scenes? Well, first of all, Mr. S was Rico Suave. I mean, mm -hmm. he comes he's charming. very charming, real smooth. And so he comes walking in. I believe every probably woman in the room was like, Ooh. who is that? <laughs> uh, but none of them had met my friend, Tisha. Okay? And so she was like, yeah, everybody that knows Tisha, if, if she does, uh-huh, it's, it's, it's on. It's on. Yeah. It's on. Right. And so she was like, uh-huh. <laughs> and we were, we were 21. Yeah. So very confident mm -hmm. um and so she was like i said girl <laughs> he's cute you should talk to him <laughs> so you know being a basketball player you will automatically have some understandably stereotypical things right. mm -hmm. and so i think initially you know he was good looking but it was like uh he a basketball player yeah. but then i think my girl was like but i'm tisha <laughs> And you know, one of the things that I, I've known Tisha, ooh, lower, I think since eighth, ninth grade. Wow. And I mean, we consider ourselves family because mm -hmm. we truly, truly are. Um, but one of the things that I have always, I think, admired about her is that when she sets her mind on something, whether good or bad, <laughs> uh, <laughs> She gonna do it, and, and the blinders. It's like she can't. She won't hear nothing else. It's like, and she decided that's gonna be my man. Did you ever try to coach her out of it? You say maybe you shouldn't. Maybe. Yeah. 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 Um. And we were twenty one. Yeah. yeah you know. Cool. So um, there was a confidence too that even though I was her friend, there was a confidence that maybe I didn't yet have to say, mm, mm -hmm. friend. I don't mm -hmm. think you should do that. And then Tisha wasn't gonna let. Okay. Listen, <laughs> this tissue, this Tisha right here, is not the same twenty-one-year-old Tisha. 
<laughs> no. But she, I mean, and I'm not saying that she what she wasn't listening because she definitely had a con conviction, especially since we we were Christians. Right. Um, I didn't say surrender necessarily, yeah, right. but we were Christians. Um, <laughs> um, so, but yeah, back to your initial um, question. When she saw him, it was like. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> this means war. That's, oh yeah. yeah means yes, <laughs> and she was committed. She was committed yes. to the process of winning him. So it was a game. You just want to win. I mean, I knew that when I realized he was a basketball player, and I knew he was interested in me, then automatically it was a game because the thought process was it was he's an athlete, so I'm sure he's aggressed by women right. all the time. And so I'm not going to be the normal aggressor. So you're not going to be the normal? No. You were so abnormal that um, <laughs> 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 you made up in your mind, I'm not going to have sex with this dude right? no matter what. Right. To the point that you layered yourself with garments <laughs> of clothes as if you were anemic and you were like at his house and said, if he going to try to get to the cookie, he going to go through so many rappers that he's going to get tired. Oh, that's exactly what happened. I said, well, what is this thought process? Well, I, well, I tell you, it was very, it, it was genius, but the reality was it was so wrapped up in manipulation. Like the whole thing, every time I'm reading this, it's yeah. like we get, the book is so compelling because you get an inside look into your mind mm -hmm. and you were able to articulate your thought process. Yeah. And so what, what, what was very triggering to me is like, I was, <laughs> as I was reading it, I was like, I got done like that before. <laughs> Until tomorrow, I just, I just gotta go ahead and go through this process. And so, when you went through that process, I know as young women, y'all are taught, you know, the earlier you have sex with a guy, the quicker he loses interest. Uh, but you took that to 10. Why was that? Because of that, again, professional athlete, male, I knew what he wanted. I mean, we had not established love for one another yet, we were still getting to know each other, and he was already trying to be intimate with me. So because of that, I knew that there was a process that I had to get in my get in my mind of how to say no, because uh, in the book, I also talk about his thought processes. Yes. His thought processes were very black and white. You were either a good girl or you were a woman of the street, yeah. period. There yeah. was no in between. And once I knew that about him, then I had to commit to the good girl. <laughs> and so that was that was what it was. So did it get tiresome? Like at the beginning stages, was you, did you get weary in your well-doing? Was it moments where you wanted to have sex, but you said, no, I'm not because I don't want to go into the, the bad girl phase? Was it, because in the book, you never talk about those weak moments. It seemed like you were so engulfed in the game that it was like you had no temptation. No, I had temptation, but I was committed. I was com once like a person. Said, once you get your I was mindset, I'm listening. I'm, at, I'm listening to your question, and I'm like, yeah, well, <laughs> yeah. I, I was committed to the nope. process, and once <laughs> I she knew, knew he, she thought he was fine. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I was yeah. like, when but. I when I was locked in, it was like, oh no, we you know we're gonna go as far as this can go. So in order for that to happen, I have to refrain. So my commitment was. I have to remain this person because I need to still get to know him because I knew how he thought. Once mm -hmm. he communicated that, I was clear. Mm -hmm. So uh, Elizabeth, AKA China, <laughs> as you was reading this about the um, yeah. beginning stages, the beginning stages of the love relationship that your father and mother had, what did that feel like? Um, It was a little crazy. I knew I knew it wasn't like the best. I literally had no idea of anything. So, I mean, I'd heard like little bits here and there. So just to hear how my mom was thinking in the relationship, I was just like, hold on. I, was like, <laughs> I don't even know this side of it. <laughs> like, wait a minute. So just, just hearing everything. And like, she's taught me how, like she's raised me to be a wife and she's taught me completely different of what, I read and heard. So I was just like, wait, why? Why I ain't hear none of this before? Because I mean, now I just, and I, I'm not manipulative in any way. So it's just total opposite. So I, I was blown away. I just didn't know, I didn't know how to take you it. You said from the very beginning, your mom raised you to be a wife. Yes. How did you feel hearing how your 
how how the grandfather taught her the processes that you know how to snag a man i mean it w it was kind of I mean, I know my papa, so I wasn't surprised. <laughs> um, I can't say I was. I can't say I was. But it still is a little crazy for him to, but he is crazy. My mama crazy. <laughs> we all crazy. Yeah, we all crazy. So, um, I mean, it was just the thought process of what they were thinking, like thinking that deep into yeah. somebody else's thoughts. It was just like, wait a minute like yeah. this is just a lot of thinking about the future and not really just I don't know it was yeah. different for me yeah. it was like I never had thought like that so <laughs> I call it was there. just different I, I feel like I heard your father's voice and he's like say baby girl let me tell you what you're gonna do you know what I'm saying what you're gonna do is if you want to get him you're gonna go it's like like I hear this dolomite pimp voice yeah in my head and I was like this is so funny because the, the process that he went through and it was working. That's what was so crazy. And and the part that was most um, telling to me was when he told her to not spend a night over there and to get her stuff mm -hmm. and pack her stuff up. And he <laughs> says, first he asked her the question that all pimps ask. <laughs> what do you want out of this? You know, what, what do you want out of this? She said, I don't know. So he goes to make up his own desire of what he going to get out the situation. I said, hold on. He didn't wait to what? She said she don't know. Why is he right. going into plan B and, and, and shaping this thing? Mm -hmm. And what am I talking about when, uh, no, Priscilla's shaking her head. When I talk about what was he, <laughs> when he goes into plan B, how do you feel about as a father? Because we know you got a, a really, really dope dad. When you think, and I know it's probably extremely hilarious hearing this father uh, <laughs> scheme this plan with his daughter. Uh, what did you think about that, hearing about that whole story? I thought kind of exactly what China thought. It was very interesting. It was a very interesting dynamic to just hear and see all the layers. Because in a way, he's he was being a father. That's yes. what I was about yes. to say. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it wasn't necessarily outside of the role of father. Right, he was right. coaching you. Right. It was just that he was doing it in a way that was a little left of center. Yeah. <laughs> He was being her daddy. Yeah. yeah. And that was the way he thought in that scenario would be the best way to counsel mm -hmm. his daughter. Yeah. And that's what I thought was so interesting. <laughs> As a father of a, you know, hashtag girl dad, I watched his love guide you. Right. And and like she was saying, left the center, but it was a situation of saying, I want to make sure that my baby wins. You know, and it's like as fathers, that's all we want. We want our kids to win at whatever they they aspire uh, to. And I was like, they actually winning. They they actually <laughs> winning. This is freaking hilarious to me. That's why my foot was going numb. You know, reading the book because I was like, this is exciting. I, I, I'm playing a whole movie in my head. I see a whole movie. My brain operates in film, yeah. in theater. So I'm seeing the whole thing. That's why your dad is like dolomite in my head. You know what I'm saying? Don't don't. I don't want to meet him. I don't want to hear how he really talks. In my head. I hear him talking like this. And so it was so interesting. Um, when we talk about um, you at 21, 22, 23 years old, when did you actually get married? When did you actually make it down that aisle? How old were you? I was 25. 25 years old. Yes. So this started out. Committed. When she was 21. Said, committed. <laughs> so this started out meeting him. You set eyes on him at the age of 21? Uh, I think it was actually 22. 22. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And y'all were in a whole nother city. And what city were y'all in? We were in Minneapolis, Minnesota. And y'all were, you and Tammy and your other girls, y'all y'all had this girl group. Right. And y'all going to be Destiny children. That's what y'all going to be. No, we were going to be Ashanti. Oh, mm -hmm. you better talk about it. <laughs> talk about it. There it is. So, so y'all were, y'all were, y'all were chewing, y'all were doing y'all thing. Mm -hmm. And, um, so talk about the dynamic between y'all as friends during that time. Well, this one of the questions, I want to go into that with a question go because ahead. it'll segue into what I wanted to talk about with Tammy. So my sister Sparkle, who couldn't be here with us today, she had a question. And so I'm going to speak that it says, Mr. S's girlfriend before you was named Chica on page 22. You said, I enjoyed the mystery of keeping certain things from him and I planted seeds of deception for entertainment. Then on page 25, you noted that you created a plan to play them against each other and sabotage their relationship. In mm -hmm. hindsight, how ironic was it that you asked Mr. S in reference to Chica, what kind of lady are you dealing with? Because she was saying you were the sabotager, mm -hmm. you were the crazy person, but you were <laughs> asking him 
<laughs> what kind of lady? What kind of lady are you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm gonna flip it on. And so one of my girlfriends, Talisha, she asked me some things about my thought processes, like some of the things I was coming up with. And this is what clicked in my mind when they asked this, and this is regarding Tammy and I. So when Tammy and I lived together, we lived in an apartment where the living room was in the middle, the den was in the middle, and her room was on this side, and my room was on the other side of the den. And we would be watching The Young and the Restless <laughs> and talking to each other on the phone, but we lived in the same apartment. Yes. Mm -hmm. So I would go, girl, are you watching what Nikki and Victor are doing right now? <laughs> she introduced me to Young and Red. <laughs> and then I was addicted. <laughs> but what I realized was those soap operas were so embedded in me. Mm -hmm. I was Erica Kane. Yeah. I was Mrs. Mm -hmm. Chancellor. I was uh, Nikki. I was all these different people because I knew all about their life. I knew how to... I could think for them what the storyline was getting ready to be because I always had drama mm -hmm. in my mind. Yeah. And so what I realized was I became those people. So when I was planning all these scenarios, I had seen it all on television. I had seen how you yes. not only was my dad giving me things, but I could add salt and pepper on it <laughs> because I could take it to another level. You know, he may say, do this, you know, pack your stuff and leave. And I'll be like, not only am I going to pack my stuff, uh -huh. you know, I'm going to add. So, you know, everything yeah. was just bigger <laughs> than what it was. So I realized these soap operas were really embedded mm. in my thought processes. So wow. I literally was creating drama even within my relationship. Because wow. of soap operas. Yeah. Honey, I was Erica Kane. She was Erica. <laughs> we talked to you about these plans that she was going to uh, enact. Uh, yes, absolutely. What would you say? And a lot of times with Tisha, y she was so dramatic. Already. Already. So, yes. you know, <laughs> yes. still is. Yeah, still is. I mean, Tisha will walk through the apartment sauntering. <laughs> I mean, it was like, <laughs> good morning, like, you know. <laughs> just, just drama. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Sisters, you know, we, I mean, we sat, y'all, we had so much fun. It, for me, even reading this book, I was like, oh my God. It was, I mean, it was a great time in our lives, yeah. too. Um, but yeah, I mean, she had, she had decided, this is what I want, this is what I'm going to do. Oftentimes, when Tisha is telling you something, the plan is already in motion. Mm -hmm. So she's not necessarily Ask asking, advice. asking for advice. Now, sometimes she is. Yeah. But in this particular situation, I was like, wait, you going <laughs> <laughs> and she was brilliant. She mm. was so yeah. good at it. Whenever she set her mind to do, it was going to happen. <laughs> and so when she said that she was going to play in deception, I'm like, I think if anything, I was like, because even though Tisha and I are the same age, that we've had different seasons mm -hmm. of our friendship. And so at that time, Tisha was more, I would think, like, probably a big sister to me. Yeah. And so... I was just like, wow. So, I mean, I'm not going to have popcorn. Like, like, really, like, this is so good. Um, and, well, she was so good at it. And I think for me, even though I felt it was somewhat warped, I think the inclusion of her dad yes. made me go, well, maybe this mm. is not so bad. <laughs> you know, I was, you know, I was young. We both were young. Yeah. Um, but when I tell you, she was on it. She was good at it, committed. It was like a job. Mm. Basically, it was yes. It it was her. It was our group was I think top priority, mm -hmm. and this came a close. It wasn't even a close second. They were neck like and neck. neck and neck. Yes. Sorry. Let me ask y'all. Since since Sparkle asked a question, do y'all have any questions that y'all want to ask? Right off the top, let's make this a conversation. I have a, I have a statement. Or, yeah. Yeah. So I know the brand new T-shirt. <laughs> Right. So they know, you know, they know her yeah. from the past. But mm -hmm. I, I met Tisha later on, later on in life. Mm -hmm. So one of the things that I found interesting is the things that they're saying about her. And when I read the book, because we're always talking on the phone every day. Right. But there were so many things that I didn't know. So when I was reading this book, I thought, is, is this my friend? Like, <laughs> is this her? <laughs> so the, the, the new Tisha that I met still has some of the same ways, but yeah. they're, they're directed in a, in, a, in a different way. Mm -hmm. right. But one of the things I found interesting in the book 
uh, when you were, well, a lot of things were interesting in the book. You know, I called you after I read it <laughs> in one night. So um, you still put sugar mm -hmm. on everything. Everything. Yep. And so those little <laughs> things like yeah. that in the book, I, you know, he, he took you to dinner. Mm -hmm. yeah, I remember when I went out to eat with her and I thought, are you putting sugar on your... <laughs> so, so some of the things that you were yeah. then, you still are. Mm -hmm. But then they're channeled in a, in a different, different way. So, it would yeah. be interesting to see how, you know, the, the reference of what you were and who you are and how they merge. They together. merge, right. Yeah. Because yeah. yeah. one thing I love about God is that he don't just change. Our, he takes our personality. Mm -hmm. Yeah. He makes us so unique for ministry. And then he tweaks it and says, now go forth. And yes. Do because you can reach a certain audience just being who you are. You know what I'm saying? And so what's so dope about this book is that the vulnerability that you had to have to just be naked and unashamed yeah. yes. and say, here I am. This is this is my scars mm -hmm. and all. Yeah. As Jesus did when he came back and said, here's my scars. Yeah. That's what you did in this book. And that's why it hit me differently, because I'm going, this is the epitome of what this podcast is all about, is for people to be so transparent. Yes. You know, the, the, the term that I coined lit, which is living intentionally and transparently. Mm. And that's what this book totally represents. Wow. And so, first of all, I just want to applaud you on the mm -hmm. effort of just saying, and I know how hard it is for 19 years yeah. of, of pain. Uh, and then for God to resurrect that and say, I'm going to use it for your glory. And then the minute that you go and put it in somebody's hands, you like covering your face like, mm. oh, my God, what are they going to think about? Exactly. Me? You know, it's such a scary moment. But, uh, you know, I like to say, too, that for me, reading the book um, and being one of her friends that went, through the, you know, I was there. Mm -hmm. seeing it, seeing it um, so it was interesting for me to get, like you mentioned earlier, her thought process because I didn't necessarily know that I just knew what I was seeing yes. mm -hmm. so as a friend I was so and I text her I said I'm so proud of you yes. um, you know to be that raw that honest yes. um, but it also reminded me as a woman that pride because what I saw because Tisha's a very She's, she's a very prideful person and you know the Word of God says you know pride coming before fall and mm -hmm. she she's She's a different Tisha, and right. so, but it, may, it, it led me to realize, too, that as, as women, um, because it, it hurt me uh, often t when I was reading it, too, that she was going through some things, not necessarily knowing how to express it. Yes. And so as her friend, it made me really feel for her. Yes. I was like, wow, okay. Um, but then it also brought me back to the realization that pride can keep us from speaking up. Mm -hmm. It can keep us from um, have blinders on and not being really true and honest mm -hmm. about what it is that we're going through. Because what, what I was reading mm -hmm. was like, you know what? There was also some hurt mm -hmm. a lot of it. That, that was happening mm -hmm. that wasn't getting addressed for her. So mm -hmm. it just, you know, I won't get teary, but it just made me really feel for her in a completely different way, mm -hmm. reading it. Like, mm -hmm. like that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's interesting you would say that, Tammy, because I told Tisha that when I was talking to her the other day, I said, you know what, I, I, I felt so sad and I, I felt so bad that my friend went through that. Mm -hmm. You know, just to, just to read those things, the hurt that she was feeling, the, the way she was trying to figure things out in her own way. But yeah, it really, yeah, it really, I felt really mm -hmm. sad and hurt yeah. that, she was, that she went through that, yeah. even though she came out on the other side mm -hmm. of it, just the fact that mm -hmm. you love her yeah. and, and that It made she me feel, because of course I went through the, the, um, the, the, the hurt and the divorce part and all that, I mean, we'll get to that later with Mr. S, but it made me feel for the, even differently for the younger Tisha. Mm. Yes. Right. You know, it yeah. just, oh, it was like, oh my goodness, I'm reading it, I'm like, wow. It's interesting y'all brought that up because I wrote this. I said, the inability to communicate your true feelings is a through line in this book. You recall the communication struggle with your first boyfriend in high school and how he constantly prodded you to reveal your true feelings. Has communicating your true feelings affected and or affected your friendships with, with any of these ladies? Or do you feel safer in platonic relationships with the same sex? Ooh. Interesting. Leterius. Leterius. <laughs> <laughs> has gone deep. <laughs> 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 I 
I think I feel like I'm sweating. Woo! Right. 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 So, so <laughs> has it affected you? Do you feel safer in platonic friendships with the same sex, or do you just find when it's when it's dealing with love relationships, as you talk about with your with your uh, with your first boyfriend, you also talk about it with Lullinger. You talk about the relationship. You say y'all had like a surface relationship at the very beginning, just mm -hmm. talking about you know what we doing that type of stuff, mm -hmm. uh, where you couldn't really go deep and connect on that level. Um, do you feel like that? Do, how do you coincide that with relationships, friendships versus uh, love relationships? Well, the teacher now that I am now, I I have released a lot of pride. I've released a lot of uh, because I've been so transparent in this book. It's like I don't have anything else to hide. Exactly. So when I talk to my friends now, they're they're deeper because I am honest yes. and I'm able to be free. I have nothing to hide. And so uh, I feel like the girlfriends that I have, I am very transparent with. They know all that there is to know. We can talk about any and everything because again, I am free. Mm -hmm. And once you are, yes. once you've gotten all that stuff out, I realize as the old Tisha, I couldn't communicate those things because I wasn't living in reality. I wasn't living in a world where I really understood even friendship, what that really meant. I, I learned that over time. Yes. And I knew how to be a friend in the sense of being there for that person, uh, you know, being committed to their loyalty, that kind of thing, but didn't know how to allow myself to let them in. Mm. Like I, I had a boundary with that. Mm. It was like, I, I can take it from any, I can take it in, I'm gonna keep it, I'm gonna, you know, uh, love on this person, that I'm able to do. But as far as me giving you me, that's difficult. I don't know how to, I didn't know how to do that. And then. that's interesting because you, in the book you talk about how you always love the company of people. I did. You had to have mm -hmm. people around all the time. I people did. People just around and it's like it was a frat house, a sorority house. Pretty much. Just over there all the time. Pretty much. But then it shows that it's this, I love when you think about how people feel like they be maybe having a connection with somebody, right. but it's real surface. Mm -hmm. Right. And uh, that's what's so interesting about the whole thing. You talk about on page 40, mm -hmm. uh, you say, I kept telling myself, and this is the thing that I think is a cautionary tale for women, period. And this is so powerful. I kept telling myself he wanted to spend his life with me. However, he simply wanted children with the person he felt was a good mother. That's all. Yeah. Exact that words. That's all. And oftentimes men meet a, a woman and be like, oh, she pretty, she got good hair. I want to have my baby. And you be like, he want to marry me. Mm -hmm. He did not say that. Right. <laughs> he, he said he wants you to have his baby. Mm -hmm. And you go run and tell everybody all that. Um, when did that revelation hit you? Not till years later when I started looking back on our relationship and I kept everything like I was one of those people that when you say certain things to me, my memory bank would just hold mm -hmm. on to it. And so to hear him telling me often, you are going to be the mother of my children. I held on to that and I had my own interpretation. My interpretation was he wants to spend his life with me. He wants to grow old with me. That's what I, I was saying to myself. He never said that. And, you know, I, after coming on the end of it, end of it, researching his background, Pretty much none of his fa family was married. Oh, wow. So that wasn't their history to mm -hmm. get married. They had children. And mm -hmm. so my family was everybody gets married. You have you get married before you have children. Mm -hmm. And so we had two different thought processes. But, you know, when you're young, you're not having these mm -hmm. conversations. No. You're just talking about the things you want. Yes. But we have interpretations that we're not saying. And I'm always telling girlfriends now, make sure you listen to what they're saying <laughs> and don't add to it. Don't try to make it more. If he says, I don't want to get married, he means that. But we say, oh, he's not ready right now. <laughs> <laughs> he's getting there. No, <laughs> yeah, I, I'm going to work on him. You know, but in actuality, they tell us what they want. And, you know, he he considered me a good girl. So that was his thought process is my children's mother is going to come from a good girl. Mm -hmm. And so I fit I fit the criteria and, you know, he wanted children. So you have some notes on your phone. What, what do you, have? you have some questions. I did. I had another one. So my sister Sparkle, she is she wanted mm -hmm. to ask five million questions. <laughs> OK, so she said. 
You acknowledged in the book that you and Mr. S were in the same book, but on different chapters. Give examples of how being in the same book on the same chapter could have looked. Okay, so one, one memory that I have about us, this was, this was the Lord showing me something and I reflected a lot to get the voice of the Lord. I didn't know it at the moment, mm -hmm. but a lot of times he would play the movie back for me and then I could hear him saying this was what was happening. So there was one day I was in the bed laying down. Mr. S came and got in the bed with me. My son came and got in the bed and then I went and got my daughter. So all four of us were in the bed. Uh, my son had to be two. My daughter had to be one. And I remember thinking, this is the dream. This is what I've lived for this moment right here. Like it was so captured in my mind that I held on to it. I remember just sitting, thinking about that. Like, this is what, this is what I wanted. This right here, this moment is what I wanted for my life to have this, this, this thing right here, not knowing it's what I wanted. But at that moment, I remember playing it in my mind. This is it. My children are here. I'm here with my husband. This is it. And I remember hearing, take a picture of it because this is it. Ooh. Wow. Take a picture of it. This is it. And that never mm. happened again. I don't I don't ever remember us being a family outside of that moment. And, and in that moment, you heard that. I did. I did. And I remember going. But I was looking at it as a good thing going. I'm going to take a picture of it. <laughs> I'm going to take a picture of it because but it was like, this is it. Like, and, and I want to say to that, yeah. I remember very clearly you striving to recreate that. Mm. Yeah. Just striving to recreate that, to, to, to make the intimacy work, to make mm -hmm. him yes. get in the chapter mm -hmm. of the book yes. you wanted him to be in. Yes. Mm. And, and I also mm -hmm. remember the sense of just pure exhaustion. Mm -hmm that that caused you mm -hmm. emotionally and physically. Yeah. Your whole body gave out on you yep. because of the weight of trying to keep up the same thing that you've been doing before y'all got married. Yeah. And then you're still realizing in marriage, okay, I'm going to have to, for this picture to be created again, right. I'm going to have to make that happen. Mm -hmm. And the weight of it occurring to you, that, that how much work it was going to be, mm -hmm. that thing wore you out. It did. So answer this, Priscilla. What's the balance? What's the balance be, uh, between? War room with your husband yeah, into tough. submission and saying, "Who I'm too tired. I can't do this. I, I, I need some help. I need like what? What is that balance? Because you saw your friend grow weary <clears throat> in trying to war room her husband into this into this chapter of this book. You know, um, do you even have an answer for that? What's the balance? Well, I, that is such a hard. That's such a hard thing because I think you have to have. I feel like you have to have somebody outside of you. Mm. to be able to help you see clearly what you're in the middle of, which is actually why I think this book is so great because I think there are a bunch of women in particular who are going to read it and go, oh, wait a minute. Yep. I mm -hmm. didn't even know mm -hmm. that this is actually what I'm doing right now. Because yes. when you're 21 and doing it, you don't yeah. know mm -hmm. yeah. you're yes. doing it. It's hindsight and right. wisdom that lets you see it clearly. Yes. So when a wife is in a troubling spot with her spouse, I feel like there has got to be somebody with a little wisdom that's standing outside of the relationship that can say to you, okay, wait a minute, this is actually dysfunctional, unhealthy, and abusive. Yes, yes. And you got to get up out of here. Yeah. Or this is actually the enemy attacking y'all's marriage and you are going to have to stand mm -hmm. in the gap for your family. There has to be somebody with some wisdom outside of the thing that can help you give, help to give you counsel. Which is good because you even mentioned that in the book. You said you want this book to be the what the Bible talks about, <coughs> the older women teaching the younger mm -hmm. women. So and, important. Yeah. And when she said that, I was what like, yes, that, that's, that's what's missing. You know, and of course, that's what they even had in the war room, the older woman teaching. So I love when I hear that dynamic and I love how uh, when you hear people in their process, which brings us to the moment of choosing your church home. You talk about the, the battle and even just choosing the church home. Uh, and I'm reading this, I'm like, oh, they finna get on the right path, they finna go to church, serve the Lord. And it's like, oh, they finna fight on which church they gonna go to? <laughs> <laughs> y'all gonna fight about Jesus? Like, where y'all gonna serve the Lord? Yeah. 
You know, and yeah, I said we thought about everything. And, and then, so wait, before we get to that, <laughs> it was interesting because your father decided to start taking the back seat to mm -hmm. the to, to the to the games. He mm -hmm. said, "Oh, here, here, talk to my wife." Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? How did you feel when he started handing you off? Again, in the moment, I didn't see it immediately. I, it just started to feel negative over time. Like the third time she got on the phone. Like when I was calling to talk to him and the third mm -hmm. time I called, he go, hold on, let me give you your stepmom, you know? And then I started going, but by this time I'm married. So the game is over. Yeah. So mm -hmm. I'm, I'm a wife now and now I'm struggling on this side, but his thought process, his, I believe the thought process may have been, well, I got you here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He can't tell you how to be a wife. I can't That's tell what I'm about you. to say. I can't, yeah. He said, my game is in yeah. getting you married. Yeah. You got to talk yeah. to a wife. Yeah. Right, wife. right, yeah. right, right. Ooh, and so deep. even with that, another thing I want to say with us as individuals, I wasn't spiritually strong enough too to even hear the Holy Spirit because I kept needing people to give me answers. And, and just like Tammy said, I was committed. I was committed to a person giving me a word too. So if somebody mm -hmm. said this was it, I believed them. Mm -hmm. I didn't add to it. Like if they said, go walk down there, take a right, then hit three steps. That's exactly what I was doing because I'm gonna follow the directions of what I was told because I believe that's gonna get me where I'm supposed to be. So if you're telling me we're struggling, well then you need to be praying. Okay, well that's what I was doing. I started praying, but I don't know what I was saying, but I was like, Lord, fix it, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. handle it, Lord, <laughs> but not really relying on the Holy Spirit from reading the word to direct my path either. Right. Like I wasn't strong enough spiritually to really hear the Holy Spirit even giving me direction. Yeah. So I was trying to find the answer in people. So when you talk about you know, what we led to the, the battle of the church, um, <laughs> <laughs> you talked about not wanting to go to your uh your stepfather's church um and you talked about in depth well i'll let you even ask that why didn't you want to go there well i felt like my i felt like mr s and my stepfather had a really good relationship and i didn't want the relationship to dictate mm. mr s's spiritual growth right because i wanted us to be somewhere where we could be around other couples I felt like we were struggling already. We were in need of some help. And the the system at that particular church just didn't have that set right. up. Mm -hmm. And so I wanted to go somewhere where I felt like not only we would be taught, but we would get some one-on-one -on -one assistance because I still wanted my marriage. Yes. I wanted to fight for it. And I just didn't think that the church was set up there where we could get the help that we needed and that's so. what i like what you pointed out you pointed out in the book that the reason why you chose to go to oak cliff bible fellowship right. is because they had systems in place mm -hmm. to help grow your marriage yes uh and you said but i didn't even care to even ask him why he chose to go to no. stepdad's church no you 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 dug your heels deep and said this is where we're going and this is what's going to be described. you said you stood your ground <laughs> that's and it committed and she was committed <laughs> she said oh i'm finna this is where we're gonna go yeah um how did you feel that your marriage grow uh being at oak cliff well the uh, the thing about it was even though we were at the church he traveled a lot mm -hmm. he was out of town often so he really couldn't even be a part of the church he didn't get the experience of oak cliff we right. had gone to another church prior to that and uh he was taken back by that because he felt like the focus was more his about money. his money yeah so when we, by the time we came to Oak Cliff, you know, he would attend with me, but he was in and out of town, mm -hmm. so he never really got a chance to. Wasn't really invested. Not yeah. at all. Not yeah. at all. Yeah, because the Oak Cliff is set up for success. Like, if you really totally. want to grow mm -hmm. biblically, I don't play no games over there. Well, like, that was grow. my growth. That's yeah. how I began to grow was because I got under that teaching. And I said in the book, I went through every free at last class yes. they offer at Oak Cliff because I was like, I knew that I had struggles and that there were things that I needed to deal with. You have to admit that first, too. Yeah. The mm -hmm. thing about it was I wasn't happy with myself. I wasn't saying I'm all right. I'm perfect. No, I was saying it is something wrong with me. Mm -hmm. There are some things that need to change. I don't like how I am treating individuals. I don't like being so headstrong. I don't like that I'm so committed to all that I do. Like nobody can tell me anything like these were things I knew that were a problem. And so I wanted mm -hmm. to have those things addressed spiritually. And Tisha, I hope 
as you're saying that, I hope that you, you know, give yourself a little bit of break. Because I hear you saying, you know, I wasn't listening to the Holy Spirit. My, my relationship with him wasn't strong. And I look back on those years, and obviously, yes, everybody has room to grow. Everybody has the need to deepen their relationship with the Lord. But I look back on those years, and I can clearly see how even your missteps the Lord was using, mm -hmm. um, that you were hearing his voice, that even if you look back and you realize you were counting on people too much to help you to discern God's word or whatever, even in that, the fact that you were yielded and open and willing to say, I need help, I gotta go to the free at last classes, I, yeah. all that right there, yeah. I remember looking at you in even in that hard season and going, wow, she's yielded to the Lord, she's surrendered, she wants his will for her life. So I hope you see the grace even in that season of your life that there was a lot God was doing and has used um, to get you obviously to where you are right now, but it wasn't, it wasn't a waste. Thank you. It and wasn't I do. a waste. Mm -hmm. I do. I realize it now on this mm -hmm. side, mm -hmm. but thank you so much for that. So in the midst of it, you just, you were just going through the motions. You were trying to figure it out. You were in this figure out phase and you were out. How old were you during that, that time? Have you even hit 30? Uh, it was between 25 and 30, yeah. actually. You so, know, yeah, we got to put this in context. Like, that's, that's <laughs> yeah. young. You know, yeah. young yeah. men, right. got kids, yeah. you know, yeah. and you like trying to figure, and, and that's what happens. Like, when you get married at a very young age, which I think is absolutely beautiful, you're growing. Right. I mean, you're growing as a as a, an adult, trying to figure out who you are, and uh, that's a lot. And you're dealing with a husband that's away. Right. Um, what was interesting, because I got to talk about this. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I got to talk about this. You were on the phone. The phone rang. We're talking about back in the day where the phone ring and there's another oh, person yeah. in another room. You can mm -hmm. pick up the phone and eavesdrop in the conversation. Mm -hmm. And you picked up the phone and you heard your, uh, Mr. Mr. S. S having a conversation with his soon-to-be uh, teammates mm -hmm. in Puerto Rico. Mm -hmm. And he said, hey, Mr. S., we can't wait till you come over here. We got some Puerto Ricans waiting on you and we're mm -hmm. going to have some fun. Yep. And you sat there and you listened to that conversation. I did. And you said, I'm about to plot. Mm -hmm. I'm about mm -hmm. to plot right now. Mm -hmm. What made you not address it then? Because my heart was based, it was committed to vengeance. It was, I'm going to get him. I'm not going to tell him that I know. I'm going to get him. That was, that was how I thought. Again, that, that soap opera queen inside of me, mm -hmm. we have to respond. We don't go and tell the person. We have <laughs> to. not enough drama. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Right yeah. <laughs> yeah, we need three more weeks of this. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Season two. <laughs> she said, I can't tell. That's, that's the normal thing. Yeah, to do. no. So my mind automatically went into oh so he, yeah. he he going over to another oh. you know i just immediately started playing a movie in my mind of what he was going to do but he didn't know what i was going to do and the thing about it is you know you don't think it through because i wasn't saying i'm going to tell him I know, you know what i'm saying i'm gonna do it i'm gonna tell him no that wasn't it it was again when you create consequences when you create sin that's what i'm going to call yeah. it when you create sin in your mind and you start plotting evil, you don't know the consequences. And so that was my mm. thought process was I want him because I was so devastated. I was so devastated when I heard that phone call, mm. but I wasn't willing to tell him I wanted him to pay. But I wasn't even thinking about how he was going to pay. Yes. I wasn't thinking about how he was going to even find out what I did. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I was so, I had deceived myself into just thinking that it was good enough that I had done it, that I was going to do something to hurt him. And what was so beautiful about it, as Priscilla was talking about how even God's guidance, even in your missteps, was your obedience to God to actually confess. Because you didn't have to tell him. You, didn't have to, you could take that to the grave. I have friends that be like, oh, I'm taking that to the grave. Mm -hmm. And you said, I'm going to take this to the cross. Mm. Mm. No, I heard the Lord clearly tell me, and you're going to tell him. And, I, and again, I, I'm always like, no. <laughs> like, that's always my first reaction when he tells me I have to do something that, that is that hard. I'm like, no, first. 
But then he started showing me consequences. Like I could see movies. That's that's one thing that the Lord does. He allows me to see movies yeah. in my mind of what will actually happen as far as the consequence. Yeah. And I go, okay, no, 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 no. Okay, so I'm going to tell him. I'm going to figure out how I'm going to do this. And that's what I did. And it was so devastating. I mean, in the book, I tell you the whole process of how it happened. You know, he wanted to listen to some spiritual tapes. And that last about one, God doing that. yeah, the last one, say, they were renewing their vows. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he, they wanted to renew their vows on, on the tape. And so we had to repeat after them. And the Holy Spirit was like, I wish you would. <laughs> I mean, you know, that's that's how the Lord deals with me. <laughs> Go ahead. Go ahead if you want to. What, what, what have you already done? Yeah. And I just had to tell it all right then and there. And it was so hard and it was so uncomfortable and painful. But looking back now, I was so glad that I was freed from that because it came back up later on in our marriage when we were going through our divorce. And so I was so grateful that all those things have been dealt with where he could not throw those things yeah. into my face. Okay, can I ask a couple of questions? Yes, yes. One of the questions is, you, you touched on it just now a little bit, but just expound on it more about, in hindsight, mm -hmm. how how do you know that you were hearing the voice of God? Like I'm thinking of someone right now that doesn't know that yeah. that direction that mm -hmm. they feel so strongly about, mm -hmm. it's God's voice. Mm -hmm. So in hindsight, mm -hmm. how would you counsel someone to know that's the voice of God? Well, first of all, this is what I've been taught. Anything the enemy wants you to do is not going to bless God. It's not going to be honest. It's not going to be true. <laughs> that's great. And so... I was having to be honest. I was having to be broken. Yes. And even though it was going to cause harm, the Lord was showing me. First of all, I was very deceptive. So for him to tell me to tell something, I was like, you know, that ain't, that ain't, that ain't, that ain't, that ain't the devil. That ain't the devil. <laughs> <laughs> because, again, that was going to bring freedom, yes. you know, and that was what I was doing, because even though I hadn't told him what I had done in that period of time, I was stressing out about it. Like oh, I was man. I was mentally still stressing out that I had done it. I was so guilty mm. about it. It was tearing me up, but I wasn't going to tell anybody. But it, it was doing all kinds of things to my physical body. So, again, the Lord talks about what love looks like or, or things that we need to think on, things that are lovely, things that are pure, things that are yes. right. And so for me, I think about all those things when I hear things. I go back to those thought processes, how they're going to affect the person. Is this going to bring bring the Lord glory? And the enemy would not have me to correct, to bridge together to uh, unify any of those things, that's not his, that's not how he thinks. So I go through all those processes and go, okay, Lord, I'm about to move, you know, because I know it's you're telling me to do it. What's so interesting about that whole phase was that you were, um, I, I was a part of this ministry at, at Covenant Church and our mantra was free men, free men. It was a men's ministry and it mm -hmm. says free men, free men. And the minute that you began to reveal what you had done, then shortly afterwards, he had to reveal what he did. Mm. Uh, and what you did, which is so mm. interesting, is that you created a safe space for him to be able to show his scars, too. And when I was reading that, I was like, they're going to work out. Like, I already know the outcome. I, I know y'all ain't together. But in my brain, I'm thinking, this is going to be good. Mm. This is going to work everything out. And it didn't. <laughs> <laughs> And um, because I know that that is the, <laughs> that is the foundation for something to grow. Yeah. Because what God would do is kill what was and then resurrect something that's supposed to be. Mm -hmm. And so I knew that in that dying process, you were dying to yourself when you start revealing. And then he has to die to himself when he starts revealing. And then you can re resurrect something beautiful, which is what he said. He said, let's let, let, let's let's, you know, pretty much dial into each other more and create mm -hmm. something beautiful. Um, and so that's interesting. You said you had a second question. You're going well, to ask? it might be a premature question, but I'll go ahead and ask it. And that is, um, if you were to boil down the answer into one or two or three bullet mm -hmm. points of how do you get rid of a man, mm -hmm. what would the, what like exactly? Blue <laughs> the initial thing that comes to my mind is dishonor him. Mm. What is? What do you mean by that? Yeah. The role of the man is supposed to lead. 
um, Mr. S could share his leadership. He could direct us verbally. Dishonoring him was ignoring that, doing everything but what he asked. Mm -hmm. um, making sure that he understood that my thoughts were better than his thoughts. Those were, those were ways mm -hmm. to dishonor him in that I knew better than him. And so therefore I was leading. Mm -hmm. So that was a huge dishonoring. And then um, dishonor and disrespect <clears throat> go hand in hand. Mm -hmm. But the disrespect would be made bigger by minimizing his thought processes or saying, mm -hmm. that was so dumb. Mm -hmm. How could mm -hmm. you come up with something like that? Mm -hmm. uh, I remember saying little things. He would maybe leave some clothes on the floor and I would go, you're so nasty. <laughs> Did your mom teach you anything? Mm -hmm. Thinking that was small and that was, it wasn't affecting him the way mm -hmm. it was. In my mind, I was saying it kind, <laughs> and I was saying it with a smile, and I was soft-spoken, so it couldn't be disrespectful mm -hmm. for me to go, mm -hmm. you were so nasty. Mm -hmm. I mean, who would live with you like this? Who says that to a person that you respect, mm -hmm. that you care about, that you think highly of? I, I didn't have that in my mind. My thought process was this is going to get him to do what I want, mm -hmm. or this will teach him how to lead us by me minimizing his mm -hmm. thoughts. So the enemy had deceived me into thinking that my way was going to allow him to hear me and say, I'm going to be a better leader. Mm -hmm. I am going to, mm -hmm. uh, become stronger in these areas, and it did just the opposite. Mm. Really, to Ooh, me, what Tisha wow. just said mm. also is, disres disrespect is not about a tone. Mm -hmm. A lot of times we as women think, if we, if we said it soft, no. Mm -hmm. To respect is honor. Mm -hmm. it, is, it is a heart matter. Yes. Right? It is such a heart matter. Um, and I'm sorry if I'm going to veer us in a different no, direction, so but um, Tisha, I thought about this this morning and it, it, it gave me chills. When you had gone to the girlfriend's place of work, mm -hmm. um, you called me mm -hmm. and you were devastated. You were shocked, but there was a kind of a, it was a balance of devastation and shock, but a puff upness mm -hmm. and I remember you saying she is nothing like me mm -hmm. she's plain she's you know and I it was almost like mm -hmm. please like mm -hmm. and you said she's you know she's kind of soft-spoken and uh, and in that conversation I was like Tisha he sh the he he's showing you the answer mm -hmm. he's gone complete opposite and even about the way a person looks mm -hmm. there was this whatever the softness about her mm -hmm. and you say in the book um that mr s says to you you are killing me softly mm -hmm. well when i tell you let me tell you something I almost let me tell you something <laughs> i'm gonna I'm, I'm tell you i'm, I'm got triggered Go ahead, tell you. <laughs> You're killing me softly. I, I called and told her oh, oh, i said this to a woman yes. before and that that yeah, y'all talk. <laughs> but I mean, just going back to the the oftentimes God has given us mm. answers. Mm -hmm. Yes, our husbands mm -hmm. are giving us answers, mm -hmm. and we and our pride just ignore. Mm -hmm. And what I'm so proud of you is mm -hmm. your vulnerability, your transparency, and saying <clears throat> because I did this, mm -hmm. it dismantled everything. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it's just a reminder. You know, to me, I mean, right. I, my my delivery is not, it's pretty much like this all the time. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, I can get a mama bear or, you know, mm -hmm. something, but it's pretty much like this all mm -hmm. the time. Mm -hmm. But killing me softly. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It can still be, we, this little, this little yes. thing in our mouth, mm -hmm. dagger. Mm -hmm. 
just a, a huge blow, but you are going to help so oh my gosh, many yes. women. Just even what you just happened in the last five, six minutes right now. Right, there. right. So Tisha, during the dating stage, you mentioned red flags. Mm -hmm. So what would you tell a young woman who's dating? What would you say to her about red flags? Mm -hmm. Well, uh, what we like to do, again, is make excuses for the red flags. Oh, they're just this, or they didn't really mean that, or that he'll grow out of that. We try to find excuses to different things. I know that's what I was doing. When we decide we want something, first of all, that can be a problem early on if we don't have, again, godly thought processes, godly wisdom around us, and then know what you want. I didn't know what I wanted. I just saw fine. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> right. Yeah, I, I just didn't know. You know, I was too young. And again, I will say, you know, I just didn't have a lot of people I talked to as far as how I really felt. I mean, you know, I, you know, I had Tammy around me and I had different friends around me, but I was so private. Like, I don't think people really knew how private I was because I really did have a hard time communicating. I could listen all day and I could ask questions, but I couldn't say how I really felt. So I will say when it comes to red flags, you know, we have to be able to realize that when something is uncomfortable or we don't like something, that is a red flag. Yes. We don't look at it as a red flag, first and foremost. We just think that's something minor or something small. But in actuality, if he's responding to you a way that makes you feel uncomfortable or unsafe, that's a red flag. If he makes, or the man or woman, if they make you feel like you're not a priority or you can wait, that's a red flag. Mm. And so a lot of times we have a tendency to uh, minimize our thoughts because it feels small because the relationship is new. But those things grow. I always say, and I said it in the book, whatever was good about him, those things remain good. But whatever mm. was horrible was worse. Mm. So, you know, his kindness, he never stopped being kind. He was always kind. Uh, but as far as his... Um, making me a priority, that was never the case from day one. So that never got better, that partner. And I was always yearning mm -hmm. to be a priority. But in my mind, I blamed things. Oh, it's his job. Oh, it's his traveling. I, I kept making up excuses for it, but it didn't change. It just got worse. So those things that you did, the things you did in the book, mm -hmm. you have your daughter here. Mm -hmm. So your dad, taught you things, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So how are you teaching China to be different from the way you were? And how did you teach G2 uh -huh. to be different, your mm -hmm. son to be different than what he may have seen or absorbed from? Yes, himself? yes. So with Elizabeth, we'll start with her. I made sure that I set them down at an early age talking about their roles. I dealt with roles a lot, even mm -hmm. as children. I talked about being a wife. When China could start talking, we started talking about being a wife. I, I was just that committed to her knowing what that meant because I felt so unlearned about being a wife. Not that she wouldn't be single, but I wanted her to know about that as well, just as much as being single. So I talked about, you know, just respecting an individual, a male, uh, even with her brother. I would put them in scenarios where they would have to respond to each other That's in good. a in a way where he is older than you, he is somebody you have to respect. So I want you to listen to him mm -hmm. and then with him, I would always say take care of her. You make sure that she's taken care That's of, good. you are looking out for her, like just constantly putting seeds in their mind of how they take care of one another because they're going to be a wife, because they're going to be a husband. I said that often, and that's why Elizabeth said early on, well, she taught us early about being a wife or a mm -hmm. husband, because that was, for me, I felt so unlearned. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't that I didn't see things, it was just so much I didn't know. Yeah. And so I wanted somebody to sit down and say, these are things that you need to be thinking about, you need to know about yourself, and that was the key. Know yourself, 
Know who you are. Know what you want. Don't depend on a person to create you to be this individual. You need to know who you are before this person comes into your life. Because what I did, I put the stress on Mr. S that he was going to save me and he was going to fix me. I had it in my mind that a husband's role, nobody told me this, mm -hmm. but I had it in my mind and I'm sure it was from Erica Kane. I had it. <laughs> I'm sure it was, he's going to be my savior. Mm -hmm. He's going to fix me. He's going to take all my stresses away. And I gave him that burden. And he was like, mm. I don't want it. Mm. I don't want to have nothing to do with that. But, and that triggered me into saying, and I'm now, because you don't want to be that, I am going to out not love you. Mm. 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 Ooh, <laughs> Let me tell you something. I thought this book was for women. I really did. And um, but I recognize that it can speak directly to the heart of a man. Mm -hmm. And like I said, preparing to interview you for this, God began to start revealing and healing some things in me. Mm -hmm. uh, there was a moment in your book that I got. Ooh, I truly understood. I felt it. That moment was when yeah, uh, when 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 Mr. S kept calling you. Mm -hmm. And you, you know, you you got a whole block party at your house, mm -hmm. and you were answering the phone, and you said, "Why you keep calling me? Why you keep calling me? Stop calling me." He said, "Gotcha." Ooh. And he, when when a dude says that, mm -hmm. it's over. When I say it is over, <laughs> and you said he never, he didn't ask you, no, he didn't ask you no questions after that. He didn't care what you did, he didn't care who you did it with. He checked out, and. I, I want that to resonate to a lot of brothers and a lot of men because what happens in those moments instead of instead of going and addressing that and say hold on hold on baby mm -hmm. do you realize what you just said to me right I'm checking on my wife mm -hmm. I may be a bugaboo right now mm -hmm. but the alternative is if I don't call you at all they ain't gonna mm -hmm. tell your girls that my husband don't even call on me he all across mm -hmm. uh, overseas and don't even check on mm -hmm. me that's the alternative so yeah. which one do you want I know I may be able to find a little balance right here but it's that's his good. insecurity that's, that's making good. him call you all the time. Mm -hmm. But it's better for him to be checking in on you every five minutes mm -hmm. than not checking in on, in, in on you at all. Uh, when you thought about that moment and when you think back on that moment, how do you feel? Because even when I just said it now, you was just like, ooh. Like you felt the mm -hmm. gravity of that response. Well, Why? she said in the book, you're so insecure. Mm -hmm. Ooh, when I, Lord Jesus. Yeah. And probably said it real and I said it just like that. <laughs> real soft. Real, real soft. Right. Well, what she said in the book was, you're so insecure. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And probably said it that sweet, too. Yeah. Yeah. And that's what I would do. Um, I felt like the calling me, for whatever reason, again, when I switched off, when I had decided to be the negative one, anything he did was irritating me yeah and so you know again I told you we were in the same book but we were never on the same page at the same time yeah so he may have been feeling like I want us to come together I yeah. want to figure this out and then I was like no because yeah. however he was feeling I would feel the opposite yeah. and it went back and forth through our whole marriage and that's it when when I when I felt like he was bothering me, I made sure that I communicated just that you are bothering me. Yeah. And you know, when you're a person and, and he was like I said, a kind person, he had some negative things about him, but his heart was kind. Yeah. I must say that about him. So he if looking back when he was calling me, he was genuinely mm -hmm. trying kind. to check on me and yeah. trying but I couldn't see that because I was so warped in my thought processes of believing he was setting something up. Yeah. Or, you know, we're still in a game mode. This isn't real. Like what he's doing, this isn't real. You know, so I always had to respond to him in a sharp, negative way for him to get it. Like I'm out not loving you right now. So yeah. you're calling me, but you're insecure. But I said, you're so insecure. Mm. And and he was like, well, <laughs> you know how, you know how, how Tammy said, I went, well, when he said it, it was the same way. <laughs> I'm done with that. That chapter's over. And he meant it. Your communication was really 
in, in your marriage Ooh. between you and Mr. S? It was Ooh. poor communication. That can both of them. Right, right, poor communication, yeah. and that that's something that's very important in a relationship, mm -hmm. in a marriage. So the, through the whole book, yeah. like your communication, or I agree. His communication. Is poor. I agree, Tisha. What you are describing, how you guys were never on the same page at the same time, mm -hmm. it's just bringing to thought for me how the enemy is so deceptive, and he does that in marriage period yes mm -hmm. yeah. and how it really is is the curse i mean a part of the curse was there would be division yes right. and i'm just sitting here getting i mean getting goosebumps yeah. i'm like mm -hmm. that is i mean we all probably can't well not you baby <laughs> 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 not yet yeah. can attest to feeling like yeah. we're right. just not on the yeah like, on the same page because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. it really is it, it really is a supernatural occurrence. It is to be on the same page with your spouse. It, it actually requires divine yes. Yes. Mm. intervention for two people mm -hmm. in a marriage, raising children, yes. different businesses, or whatever you're doing, to be on the same page about the purpose of your life, the vision, the direction, the choice, all that. Mm. It, it's either God or that ain't gonna happen. Right. Yeah. Mm. That's very true. It's either God or that ain't gonna happen. Well, mm -hmm. that's a void. Yeah, that's a word right there. <laughs> Jesus, Lord Jesus. Yeah. Oh, Lord. Any questions? Because I know you have some notes. and I'm So what I have to do, I had to get back into my mindset to say that I'm really hosting this show, but it's not really me. It's Tisha. <laughs> uh, because if you read the book, you'll realize that um, Tisha going to produce whatever it is you think you're producing. So I'm going I'm to fall back and say, uh, Tisha, anything else you would like to say? <laughs> That is what's so funny to me. <laughs> so, Latarius, mm -hmm. when you read mm -hmm. about the wedding, oh Jesus, what was your thoughts? Because you're a male, and you've been married, and you've gone through a whole process of getting married. What did it? Did any of that connect with you, or did you feel like this woman is what? I felt that this woman is controlling. Mm. And I said, oftentimes men don't try to, it's crazy because one of the biggest decisions that both people are making is the wedding. Right. But men are so omitted from that process. Mm. They'd be like, this ain't about you. You're going to wear this. You're going to show up here. You just show up right. and say these vows. Right. And he has no input. Mm. And so when mm. he tried to give input and you shut him down, I was like, why would you shut this man down? You done talked the man out of signing a prenup. You done, <laughs> you done did all this other stuff. Now he can't even have a say so on what his wedding going to look like. And I knew, I felt the breaking of mm, his heart at mm, every moment. I just mm, said, ah, every mm. time it happened, I said, ah. I literally, physically, I was sitting on my patio after, my, after I got off the <laughs> I went to the patio, <laughs> laying like this, and I went to the patio. And when you did this, I just said, ah, mm. Tisha, Lord mm. Jesus. Mm. I said, Tisha, why'd you do that? Mm. I said, the man is trying. I said, he may not know every process on why I do, but he's just going along with the motion. You got the man down to right. the altar. Right. Let the man have a say so on what the reception. And what's so bad about it is your bootleg scenario on the reception. <laughs> you had over 1,500 people there around four tables. Yeah. I was like, how'd that work out for you, Tisha? You know, and I said, and, but what it showed me the oh, your stuff bootleg. <laughs> <laughs> you know, your stuff bootleg reception again with 1,500 people. Table. She said, everybody going to stand up. I'm like, really? Mm -hmm. Everybody's just going to stand up. Yeah. It was very chaotic. Yeah. <laughs> just to get what you want. Just, just go out I want. get what That's I it. want. And what's so beautiful about it, because what it did to for me, and it's a cautionary tale for me, is that I want to make sure that I am submitted to the process mm. and the wisdom of my wife. Mm. I don't want to operate like I know everything. Mm. I said, I did that the first time. Mm. I get the second go around. I want to learn some things. Yes. And, and I said that God, if God brought this woman into my life, that means that she is going to help see my blind sides. Mm. And so I want her to be utilized in that realm and to cover me and be able to protect. And I, I have to tap into her wisdom to be able to say, what do you see? Mm. Because I'm telling you as men, mm. I'm going to speak for myself. I have an ego. So mm. I think I know stuff. And oftentimes when it backfires, I go, I really, did, I really thought that was a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> like, and the whole point is I'm trying to prove to that yeah, woman. Yeah. So as men, we often try to prove to the woman that we got it. We can yeah. protect you. We can cover you. Yeah. Rest. We got this. 
And what I what what hurt so bad in that process that he was trying to insert himself into this wedding, which most men know not to do. We're told this crazy thing <laughs> not to insert ourselves in marriage or weddings or whatnot. But you want us to show up fully in the in the marriage, but don't want us to participate in the wedding. <laughs> wow. wow. And so and so the reality is that I want to make sure that I tap in. That's mm. why I said this was this was for me. Mm. You wrote this for me. Mm. So when I was wow. reading this, I said. Okay, God, I hear you. I'm in surgery right now. Go mm. ahead and cut me. Mm. Cut me. And every little moment that happened, every everything that I did wrong in my marriage, I looked and said, oh, that was me. Wow. Mm. I said, why are you snitching on me in her book? I have nothing to do with this. You know, and I'm reading, I'm going, wow, I cannot believe this. And I want to reveal every detail mm -hmm. because I want people to buy this book. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But it was so eye-opening for me as a man, mm. I recognize how when a man checks out, mm. what that looks like. And I'm over hollering at him, talking, don't check out, don't check out, don't <laughs> check out. She, she didn't mean that. Pray, pray. I know she's killing me softly, but pray, pray. And I'm going, yeah. that's the that's the Lateris 3.0 that's speaking to the broken Lateris mm. saying, I know what that looks like mm. if, it's, if it keeps going unchecked. Mm. And so this That's book good. was so beautifully written because you wrote it from a place of vulnerability and I can sense the guidance of the Holy Spirit over these pages mm. because it's the living word of God. Mm. When, when it's speaking to me, it's bringing life to me and I'm going, oh, Jesus. Yeah. I mean, mm. I'm literally jumping like that reading and I'm going, okay, thank you, Lord. And the minute I read it, I got mad at God at first and then I walked away and I said, thank you for loving me. Mm. Amen. And I want this book to, to touch millions of lives. Yeah. Hallelujah. Thank you so much. Go ahead and conclude whatever you got to say. <laughs> I'm just so grateful that you all are here. Do you all want to share anything? Was there any other thing in the book that you felt like you wanted to hit on before I shut it down? Is there, I don't want to be controlling. Well, I, I just wanted <laughs> to say, not about the book really, but about you because you, one of the things I admire about you, you are one of the most consistent people I've ever known yes. in my mm -hmm. entire life. Mm. You are who you are in every scenario around every person. That's right. Know who they are. Yes. You are Tisha. Mm. Your right. personality is what That's it is. Right. You are who you are. I, I have told you that to your face mm -hmm. and I've told many other people that. Yeah. Consistency mm -hmm. is yes. who you are. But your big, bright, bubbly, outgoing personality, mm -hmm. the way you dress, the way you mm -hmm. are. I feel like you are more, you've always been that, mm -hmm. but I feel like you are now able to more authentically even be that mm -hmm. in this season of your life than you could then. Mm -hmm. Because even though you were the same, there was a element of um, this is a great camouflage mm. because I don't have to now go, nobody's going to peer down into what's happening in my heart, in my mm. mind, in my marriage because mm -hmm. This camouflage is mm -hmm. so bright and bubbly and big and outgoing mm -hmm. and outspoken that it's a great opportunity for me, like you said, to absorb and listen to everybody else's problems. Mm -hmm. But I could just put on this camouflage, this big smile, and this bubbly voice and go out there and nobody's going to invade my personal space. Mm -hmm. And I, I love that now the Lord is giving you an opportunity to be all that Tisha is mm -hmm. still. But it's not a camouflage and a veneer for something. Right. Mm -hmm. So you're more completely, I mm -hmm. think now, mm -hmm. who you were always meant to be. And Amen. it's a beautiful mm -hmm. thing mm -hmm. to watch. I love seeing yes. you in this season, getting to see your children flourish, getting mm -hmm. to reap the harvest, Amen. getting to pour your story out, getting to let your mess be a message that other people can benefit from. I'm just so grateful to the Lord for letting you live this version mm -hmm. of yourself. Mm -hmm. Ooh, Thank you so mm -hmm. much. Thank you. <laughs> what I love is that um, the redemptiveness that you also share towards the end of the book. Mm -hmm. yes. And I, there was a line you said, um, I forget exactly how you say it, so I'm going to just paraphrase, but it was um, that God gave you another chance. Yes. yes. And, and letting you meet Mr. J. Wayne. Yes. And I love that. You sharing that shows that when we are honest with God yes. about who we really are yes. and we agree with what he's agreed with, yeah. then you have the opportunity to not only help people, but get another chance. Amen. And then Thank also to counseling. Yes. Yes. Married people. <laughs> I am an advocate. I will be celebrating 26 years. Yes, hallelujah. And we would not be 
if we not to, we wouldn't necessarily be together, we wouldn't be happily married. Yeah, yeah. yeah. If it That's were important. not for counseling. Yeah. That's important. Yeah. And I've got to have to, you know, have to share that. Yeah, like, that's wonderful. Go, run, yes. get tune-ups. Yeah, yes. yeah. It is so important. Mm. That's great. That's One of the things that, that I wanted to say to you about mm -hmm. your book, mm -hmm. um, I've been married 25 years, mm -hmm. happily married, mm -hmm. and, and uh, gone through a lot of things, ups and downs, as we do in marriage. Mm -hmm. And I, I'm at a place in my marriage where I feel like we, we've been together so long where it starts to get smoother. Mm. But even after reading your book, mm -hmm. there are things that I could s still see after all of this time, things that I do mm. that I could see in your book. Mm. So I appreciate you for that. Yeah. And you, you are just a genius in so many ways. Just, I, I just love being your friend and learning from you mm -hmm. and talking to you. And Thank I get you. to experience your personality and all of the people that have known you for years and years. Mm -hmm you know, they've gotten to experience that. So I just yeah. appreciate your book and I love you so very much. Thank yeah. you, thank you so much. I appreciate it. I didn't want to say anything because I don't want to get emotional. <laughs> <laughs> My baby. <laughs> <laughs> just hearing everything that you went through, it was really hard because I just didn't know. Mm -hmm. And for you to become a single mother and take care of me and Crystal, well, mm. <laughs> the way you took care of me and J2, um, the way you did and the upbringing that we had, it was amazing mm -hmm. still with all of that. And you never talked bad about our father and you never gave him any, just any bad rep. And I appreciate you for that because when I read the book, I was just like, who is this person? Mm -hmm. I, I had no idea mm -hmm. that any of that had happened. And so I thank you for mm -hmm. being the mom that you've been. You've been an amazing mom. Thank you, daughter. And you just loved us with like unconditional love. And we've, I for sure, I was the rebellious one, and so <laughs> <laughs> I know I gave you a lot more. Um, well, we both we we had our things, but yeah. I, I just yeah. Yeah, you know, <laughs> yeah, I, uh, and it helped me see two more of the ways I'm like my father. Because with us not having the best relationship, I didn't really get to see. We'll learn mm -hmm. a lot about him as much as I would have to desired. So mm -hmm. it um it opened my lot uh, my eyes to a lot. And so just thank you for being vulnerable and letting me see that and hear everything and getting a clearer view of what life is. Yeah. It is open my eyes a lot. And you protected so. her. Yeah. yeah, you yeah. Know, yeah. Letting her know those things you protected her. Yeah. 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 You did so. a great job raising right mm -hmm. these kids. Thank you. Fantastic. Thank you. Bravo. Yes. Absolutely. Beautiful. Thank you. So we're gonna go to the audience to get their feedback and some questions that they had as they read how to get rid of a man. Um, you have a special friend here today? I do. My good friend Sharice Brown is in the building. Hey, she Rice. Hi, TT. <laughs> okay, so Sharice, you read the book. And of I did. course, after you read the book, you called me sharing an uh, earful. So I did. if you don't mind, let the audience know some of what your experience was with the book. A lot of it was really just <clears throat> in awe and amazement of my friend and everything that she experienced, number one. Um, coming from a background of athletes and knowing the situations and scenarios with relationships with athletes, I was just really sh just stunned by the things that I was reading that my sister had to endure. Mm -hmm. um, one of the things that really stood out to me was her transparency about just details of the book. Because a lot of times people will write books, but they don't go into detail and they're not transparent. They give you a little bit, but they don't tell it all. And what I was really, really taken by was how transparent and how she just gave you all of it. It just blew me away. Thank you. And did I it loved give, it. Did it give you a, a different perspective? On your friend, you like it my did. friend is a savage. <laughs> it did. It was definitely some things I was like, wow, okay. So 
that's why she's on me about certain things. <laughs> <laughs> you know, yes. she's always been that person I can pick up the phone and just share anything with. Mm. And then to be able to know that she had experienced some things. I didn't know she had gone through any mm -hmm. of those things. Mm -hmm. You know, of course, I knew of the divorce. I knew details of that, but not in depth. Mm -hmm. And when I read what I read, I had to pick it up and say, hmm. <laughs> really? <laughs> and I think I was in LA and I just finished it and I was I was on a plane. I read it literally on a plane. Yeah. I, I couldn't but put it down. I just could not put it down because of everything that I was reading. I wanted to get to the end. I wanted to know, okay, how, how, how? And then, of course, I know the ending because we see what we have here in this beautiful woman. But I'm just saying I wanted to get to the end to know exactly how she was able to go through all of those things and still remain the woman of grace that she is. Amen. So. Amen. Thank you, Amen. She Rise. You're Thank so you. welcome. <laughs> all right, so uh, Pastor Mike, introduce yourself and, uh, and ask the question that you have. My name is um, Victoria Holmes. Victoria Holmes is one of my BFFs. <laughs> <laughs> First, I want to say, as far as, you know, we talk about manipulation. And when I read the book, not only do we manipulate men, we manipulate our friends. We even manipulate God. That's one of the things that came to me mm. is how we even manipulate God. Because we will tell God that if you do such and such a thing, yeah. then I promise you I'll never do whatever <laughs> it may be. Mm -hmm. And that's a form of manipulation. Mm -hmm. So the scenario, this book and everything that Tisha was talking about it, we do it in everyday life. Mm -hmm. yeah. And a lot of times we don't recognize it. Mm -hmm. We don't recognize what we're doing to other individuals. Mm -hmm. The thing that I want to ask you, Tisha, is when did you really, really get to that point of brokenness when you really knew that you were wrong? I heard the Lord say to me, go and apologize to him. So that let me know I was wrong yeah. by him telling me, go apologize to him. And I said, no. Was this while you were married? This is this was wild. This is at the end of we were at the end of the marriage. We were already uh, going through the divorce process. I'd already been served papers and uh, I remember hearing the Lord say, go and apologize to him. Did you? No. You didn't. Because again, when you live in a world of deception, you can talk yourself, even though I could hear from the Lord, I still could talk myself into why that was wrong. Mm -hmm. Like I knew it was right, but the flesh was really the, the powerhouse. It was saying, he doesn't deserve it. Mm. He's mistreated me so much that why would I give him an apology? He owes me one because that puffed up side of me was still in control. It was still not broken completely. God was breaking me, but I still was just here. I wasn't all the way over. It was just like he's working. He was still working on me. So there was. That's why it was so much more that I had to deal with because he just, I could see the Lord saying this child here, oh, when I'm done with her, because she's so hard hearted and she's so rebellious. And, and I tell you guys this in the book, when you don't discipline a child, these are the consequences. I believe that, yeah. you know, he talks about sparing the rod and spoiling yeah. the child. You will not eat a spoiled apple. Right. You don't want spoiled broccoli. It yeah. smells, it stinks, and it, it gets around everything else and it becomes stinkier contaminated. Yeah. and contaminated. So a spoiled person, a spoiled soul, heart, it wants to do that to other people without realizing. I was trying to hurt him. So I couldn't apologize. Yeah. That was, that was going to be right. So. That's good. All right. Introduce yourself. Hi, I'm Talisha. Talisha's doing? another BFF. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we've been around for a while. Um, 
<laughs> and I was thinking about Tammy touched on it, and you were just talking about mm -hmm. it. As far as when Tammy said, back in the day, you were stubborn. You mm -hmm. could not tell Tisha nothing. That's nothing. true. Nothing. Um, she told you, and then she was also determined. And so throughout this process, because I've, I've, we met at church, mm -hmm. and um, and I knew your husband before I knew you. Yeah, tell him. I knew that. of tell your him, husband. Tell him, tell him how we became friends. <laughs> Um, <laughs> so I love sports, and so I knew about basketball, and uh, we met at church. So she had this beautiful blue suit and some um, heels, and just was just fierce. And um, she came up to me, and she was like, "Hey, you know, we were talking," and she was like, "I'm married to Mr. S." S. And I said, "Number eight or number whatever number he was." Mm -hmm. I knew his number, his stats, and I looked at. Her, I said, "We're not gonna get along because." I have a crush on your husband. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but that, and that's but, but that, wait, y'all gotta hear the rest. But that's my personality. <laughs> like I joke like that, and people may not get it. But she immediately she said, "Okay," <laughs> and I said, "Oh my god, I love her!" Like because she got my joke. Like that's just not me. But that's something I would joke about. But I did know her husband, and he was fine. And I was like, "Listen." Listen, if you don't know, I need to tell you. And so, but we just formed a friendship from there. And um, and Tisha would tell you she was she was very determined mm -hmm. in anything she put her mind to. Like like Tammy said, if she told she told you what the plan was, <laughs> and she was determined to get it um, to make it happen. And I've watched you take that determination and turn it. Mm. Um, I've watched you determined that you were going to submit to God mm, and you were determined right. to raise Christian godly uh, kids. You were determined not to talk about Mr. S mm -hmm. in a bad way. Like we would have conversations mm -hmm. throughout the journey and you would either whisper or be like, I'm not going to talk about it because the kids around, mm -hmm. even though he, he may have done something foul mm -hmm. or you were just emotional. And I've, I've watched you be determined to mm -hmm. share mm -hmm. and to open up and also to allow people to um, counsel you mm -hmm. and to say, hey, friend, that's not good. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Because back in the day, you couldn't have told you that. Right. The, but the woman you are now, you're open to, hey, iron sharpens iron. Mm -hmm. So tell me what I need to do or what do you see? And so I've seen that change. Mm -hmm. And then the other change that I was thinking about when reading the book is, the it wasn't even wisdom from your dad. It was... <laughs> <laughs> it was advice. It was, it was advice and it was counseling, but the teacher I know now seeks wisdom. Mm -hmm. And there's a difference. Mm -hmm. Like he was smart and like you're saying he was street smart and I mean, he was smart in the game, but he wasn't wise and there's a difference. And That's I think difference. Priscilla mm -hmm. talked about that too mm -hmm. far as there's a dis difference in we have to seek wise counsel mm -hmm. and what that entails. And I see, and you do that now and you encourage me to do that. Mm -hmm. um, and if that's just from wise counseling coming from your relationship one-on-one -on -one with Christ or to let's call Priscilla, let's call Tammy, let's ask them, let's call Victoria and say, hey, um, Julia, am I wrong about this? Mm. You know, um, because the, the wise counsel is I trust the God in all of these women mm -hmm. and I trust their heart for me. Mm -hmm. And so I've seen you just grow that. And so I'm just mm. so proud of you. Wow. Thank so you. Proud of you. Thank you. Thank you. I think that that needs to be really touched on is to, uh, and like I said, this is all about me. Um, <laughs> because I'm listening to these powerful women of God, and I'm saying, listen, I need, when I when I link up with the, my purpose partner, yeah. I want her to have uh, a, a multitude of, of, of women that pour into her that she can seek guidance from yeah. and whatnot. So I'm just listening to this. I'm like, put that on my list right there. That's what I need <laughs> because that's important, yeah. you know, to have a community of people that's not going to be like, oh, what you need to do is go right. to the club, right. put on your little dress, and we're going right. to go do whatever. You right. know, it's about saying, no, let's, let's, right. let, let's talk about this. Yeah. Uh, so that's beautiful. Uh, it's awesome you. that you have that. Yes. Um, Milania. <laughs> Milani. Well, my name is Milani. <laughs> <laughs> Tisha has several names for me, and I embrace them all. So one of the first things I want to say is when I came today, I looked around, and truly seeing so many amazing women is a testament to who you are. That's real. Mm -hmm. 
like I mean powerful women just everywhere and I'm like that's Tisha she she would bring something like that together that's number one reading this book first of all you were true to character it is so dramatic (laughs) so you get to around the fourth oh my god I was like (gasps) you did what (laughs) and you got all of these dang (laughs) moments where you're like oh my god oh my god oh my god so it was such a page turner Mm. but it was a page turner with purpose Mm. because I originally thought I was like "Mm, that's an interesting title I I don't need that yeah listen I was really setting myself up because I saw so much of me Mm. in that book. Like, oh, I do that. Mm. Like, and not really realizing, like Tammy said, it's the tone of your heart. Mm. Like, you can be a really laid back person Mm. and just be throwing darts. Mm. And, you know, and how you said, I'm sorry, Jerry. I I was literally (laughs) sitting in the back like, oh, my God, I got to rush home. (laughs) I'm just so out of order right there. And it just, it keeps doing that. I already read it once, but hearing everybody talk, I'm yeah. like, I still yeah. got work to do. Yeah. I still got work to do. Okay, let me. So, so my question is, how do you, um, if you could tell someone how to salvage mm-hmm. when you find yourself mm-hmm. some years in, and you Very see this question. damage mm-hmm. along the way that you've done, and y'all still get along, but you just see damage that you've Ooh, done. Yeah. And you, you can kind of hear like, oh, man, does my husband feel that way? Like, gotcha. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You hear all those moments mm-hmm. that you said in that book, and mm-hmm. I'm like, oh, my God. Like, mm-hmm. how do I salvage it now? What's the, the Can you Very give us question. restoration, mm-hmm. ter- us counsel in terms of the restorative process? Mm-hmm. What? Well, thank you, first of all, for that. That was so awesome. And so when I think about salvaging, I had opportunities. I believe the Lord does talk to us and he gives us direction. I would just happen to be the rebellious one. I happened to be the one that was hard hearted. But I would say for the person that's not as broken or uh, and it can be any person. I don't know the situation that the person would be in, but I would pray that we do listen to that soft inner voice that keeps us in the right direction that says, don't do that. Don't do that. Or don't say that or go back. Mm -hmm. Apologize. Say it differently. Be slow to speak this time. There are practices that we can do on a regular basis. I am remarried to an amazing man and what I do differently because I'm sure even, well, you know, he's read the book and, you know, he also would see me as, wow, you were something else. And that's gratitude for me that he says you were something else because I remember crying out to the Lord and saying, Father, if you would just give me an opportunity to glorify you in marriage, if you would give me a chance to glorify you, I want to show you what I've learned. I want to be a representative of how you've broken me. And I want to treat a male person with respect, with honor, with all those things. So once we know the tools, I would say most women don't know the tools. First and foremost, we learn them over time, but we don't get them right away. But I would say with the appendix that I have in the book, I kind of tell you all the things to get rid of a man. You know, when I talked about the dishonor, the disrespect, uh, using our words to cut because I could cut a person. So I would say in salvage in salvaging a relationship, the communication, of course, is key. But saying low is the key. Staying low. I was so puffed up, so in a place where I wasn't humbled, where I couldn't hear, I couldn't receive. I wasn't open. But if we're in a low position, We can hear them. We can hear their heart, how they're saying it, what they're in need of. And if we're low, we will do something about it. I just wasn't in that place. I couldn't capture all those things because my bigness overshadowed all the goodness that I I really wanted to give. But it was so big, it it just was going to smash that that lowness down every time. So my practice, this is a 
practice. I even practiced it today before I left home. And staying low, making sure I acknowledge my husband, making sure that I check on him, making sure that I see that he has what he needs before I leave the house, asking him, is this something I can do for him? Just constantly mm -hmm. staying low, constantly putting myself in a position of serving and checking on him because he will reciprocate that, but it has to be a practice. Mm -hmm. That's good. Tisha, I want to tell you something. Ooh. I want to make sure to get this in before we finish. Okay. But I was surprised when I opened up the book and saw that it was dedicated to mom. Yes. I did not, I didn't know that you didn't tell me that. Yeah. So when I opened it up and saw that you dedicated it to her, it yes. just kind of took me back. Mm -hmm. And I text my dad mm -hmm. and my siblings and mm -hmm. I said, Tisha dedicated this book to mm -hmm. mom. Mm -hmm. I know y'all spent a lot of time together. Yes, we did. And I know that she encouraged you. Yes. Over and over and yes, over again she to did. write this book. Mm -hmm. So. Mm -hmm. So I want to tell you, on behalf of my mother and your first lady, <laughs> that she is so proud of you. Thank you. She says to you, good job. Thank you. Good Thank you so much. Ooh. And I want to say this about your mom. Um, I had the opportunity to serve Mrs. Evans with makeup and wardrobe. And I remember talking to her. She was one of the people that I talked to often about marriage over and over and over again. And the consistent wisdom that she would always say to me is, you know, you give them the answer and the question. Yeah. You know, you say, what do you think about this? And put the answer in there. <laughs> what do you think about us driving a black car now? <laughs> and then him coming back and saying, well, let's get a black car. <laughs> <laughs> that, was, Lois, that, Lois that was your mom's <laughs> wisdom. She would say, you know, give them the answer in the question. <laughs> they, they don't know you're doing it. So I started to practice that and it works, y'all. <laughs> it works. So thank you for allowing me to work with your mom and just have that time with her because she talked about you guys all the time and she always elevated her babies, which is what I appreciate about, appreciated about her so much. And she was always esteeming her husband. I mean, I remember her just referencing him as pastor. Mm -hmm. You know, my pastor, he blah, blah, blah. And then other times she would say his name when she was talking about him as a husband. But it was always with the utmost respect, mm -hmm. the utmost respect. And so that's what I gleaned from her is just, again, staying low and giving the answer in the question. <laughs> 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 I would like to say one more thing. Go ahead. Tisha is an example of a woman after God's heart. And I honestly believe that through the whole journey, because she is a woman after God's heart, that's why she, even in the midst of all the drama, all the junk, all the stuff, I still believe, Tisha, you were favored. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I honestly okay. believe that you were favored. Thank you. And it's because you are a woman after God's heart. Amen. Thank you. And that is the thing that drew us together. I had, I have had more faith in God because of Tisha, mm. being a woman after God's heart. Mm. That's, that's thank true. you. And that's she true. encourages that. Mm -hmm. And I just want to say thank you, thank you, thank you. You're welcome. Welcome. <laughs> welcome. <laughs> <laughs> I was, I had a question. I know Tisha had said if you had a question. Yes. Um, what advice would you give 
um, a young woman experiencing the same situation or same scenario um, early in her marriage, mm -hmm. um, how would you encourage her? And remember, she may not have the the faith and of and the relationship, you know, with God as you have. Mm -hmm. But um, just you know, no, she doesn't know what direction to go in. Like, yeah. you know, and she's seeking advice from the wrong people, mm. you know, and the wrong friends. You know, Milani touched, or I think Latera said, go into the clubs and all that. Mm -hmm. What would you suggest, or how would you? What advice would you give her? Well, a person, first of all, that's not ready to receive, it's really hard to get them to listen until they come to a place of, again, humility and realizing that they're not doing this well, that this is something that isn't causing them to be strengthened or empowered in a positive way. You almost have to become broken or hit rock bottom before you even want help. And that's the hard part for others to watch is having to go through that process. But I would say that's pretty much the only way. If a person is committed to the negative mm -hmm. already, if they're in that journey of this is what I want to do, you have to let them go through that process. No one, like my friends were all aware of my stubbornness and my strength, and it wasn't gonna be them that was gonna have the answer. The Lord was gonna make sure that I was dependent on him because I was talking to people and I was getting you know, some godly counsel, but my heart was hardened. And so until God could really break me and soften me where I could hear him and realize the path I was going down was not benefiting whatsoever, I would say to that person, I would warn them. I would allow them to know I've been here and I've done this or you know, connect them with other people that have been there and done that. Let them hear that process. And then they have to decide either they receive it or they're not ready for it. And but it'll come back to them like I had so many different things come back to my mind when it was time for me to make the change. Mm -hmm. All the positive communication, all that came back to me. But it wasn't until I was broken to receive it that I could even replay those movies again. Because mm -hmm. that stood out in your book because you stayed. You know, and that's what a lot of women yeah. do. They just stay. They yeah. don't try to change the narrative. They don't try to change it. They just stay and endure. And, and a lot of times that's what we're taught to mm -hmm. stay, endure. And I'm not saying you don't stay, but I wasn't praying like I should have. I wasn't, in, I wasn't encircling myself, too, with the assistance because I wasn't being honest. I wasn't transparently telling other people to the degree that it was. I mean, I, I would say enough, you know, I would tell people there were problems and things of that, but I don't even know if I knew how bad it was at the time. You know, uh, when you just touched on the, the uh, impact that Dr. Lois Evans had on your life. Yeah. Uh, it's the epitome of what you talk about in your book about the older women teaching the younger yes. women. Yes. And I don't know, anytime her name comes up, it just, it just messes me up. Yeah. Because, uh, and I talked about this on the podcast where um, you know, Oak Cliff Bible Fellowship would hire me to produce their Christmas Eve yeah. productions. Priscilla participated in a couple of the Easter productions. And I remember Dr. Lois, at the end of the production, she'll be standing next to me trying to talk to me about how powerful the show was. And I would be looking at Dr. Uh, Tony Evans saying, I, I got to get to him. I'm waiting for an open, open uh, door to go speak to him. And I admitted on my podcast how convicted I felt uh, a couple of years later after going to our home going and hearing how amazing this woman was, mm -hmm. but she was so humble. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And I was like, I felt so convicted. I cried so hard. I said, God, teach me to see. Mm -hmm. Let me never be in the position where I'm overlooking. Yes. Greatness right there. <laughs> That's good. So in the so in the in the in the process, mm. as we talk about how to get rid of a man, uh, I look at it as me getting rid of the flesh side of me, mm. the man side of me. Mm. I want to get rid of that person. Mm. I want to get rid of that so my spirit man can always take the forefront. And uh, like I said, I shot a video with with, with Doctor Lois Evans, and uh, no one ever even seen that video to this very day when mm. they were. Uh, opening up the grove or whatnot, and I was just oh, listening yeah. to her, and I was listening to her cast vision uh, and talk about 
uh, her husband. I said, I want that. Mm. I want that. She has this beautiful grace about her. I'm jealous. I'm jealous of y'all. Y'all got a chance to, to, to witness that. Like that. I was sitting there looking at her. I was like, man, that is beautiful. Mm -hmm. And so it's so powerful that she encouraged you to write this. Mm -hmm. And you gave birth to this. Listen, I can talk to these amazing queens all day. Uh, let's give it up for this awesome queen, Leticia Owens, for writing this book. How to get rid of a man. Um, this book is a cautionary tale to, to warn you of the travesty that you can set yourself up to when you start trying to handle things your way and, and taking the reins off of God. Uh, it's a beautiful song that says, Jesus, take the wheel. And we got to always operate in that. Uh, so make sure y'all purchase this book, How to Get Rid of a Man. Uh, it's everywhere books are sold. You can also visit our website. I'll put that in the description. But uh, thank you so much for being transparent. Thank you all for joining us. Uh, and, and just offering such great wisdom and context around your friend. And uh, this is what Queendom look like. You know, it's, 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 it's beautiful. I love this. So anyway. Uh, thank y'all for supporting the podcast, and uh, we'll see you later. Good job. Yay. Thank you for listening to the Dear Future Wifey podcast. Remember, be lit. Live intentionally and transparently. And don't stop loving. Make sure to subscribe to our Dear Future Wifey YouTube channel. We're available on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, and Stitcher. We welcome your support. Simply share our podcast with your friends and family.